and welcome to India Vision. With us today we have Ms. Shushma Swaraj. She is currently the official spokesman of the BJP, the opposition party in India. She is also part of the South Delhi Parliament constituency. In 1977, she was elected as the youngest cabinet minister at the age of 25, which was the youngest eligible age at that time. She was renowned for this, being the youngest cabinet minister. She was also in charge of labor, food and civil supplies, and the educational sector in Haryana. Throughout her time, she has also been part of the information and broadcasting department of the central cabinet. She had a profession as a lawyer, and we have the honor of having her with us, with us today. Good morning and welcome. Thank you. The current eligible age for voting in India has been changed from 21 to 18. Yes. Why has this been changed mm -hmm. and do you feel that 18 is a proper age, a mature age for people to vote? See, I think all over the world the age has been reduced. It's 18 only. And uh, I think you are 18. Yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, and I think you are mature enough to decide. If you are mature enough to interview me, <laughs> you are mature enough to decide. Because by this age, students complete their uh, plus two level, that is school level. Mm -hmm. And I think they are mature enough to decide as to who should govern them. What kind of a government do they want? And um, therefore, we also supported this reduction of age. And uh, we welcome this reduction. But why has it taken you so long to realize that the eligible age should be 18 and not 21 then? See, ours is our democracy of the last 50 years only. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time of the framing of the constitution, I think the constitution framers thought that 21 should be the right age. But that's why our provision of amendment is in the constitution, that uh, whenever you feel a practical difficulty, you want to change something, you can modify it. And I think after 40 years, it's a time when we realized that um, it should be reduced to 18 and not to 21 and there should be more electorate and um, even children who finish their schooling should be able to participate in the voting structure mm -hmm. and we did that. So that's very um, logical. Mm -hmm. Now, um, if I'm not mistaken, India allowed the women to vote right after independence and um, at the moment, since the eligible age for voting is 18, this is both for women and men, there's a lot of illiteracy in, the, in India and do you feel that those that haven't had a proper education have proper knowledge and have access to proper knowledge of the different parties in India, in the government? See, education and wisdom are two different things. Mm -hmm. And to know your representative, education is not that necessary. Though I'm not undermining the influence of education or the importance of education, we are um, heading towards that also, uh, universal education, all children, especially girls and boys should go to the school, that's one, one thing. But a democracy should be successful only if the electorate is educated, I don't agree to that. Mm. Because the common sense, the wisdom, see I can just give you one example, in 1975 emergency was clamped in India, the whole India was silent. Mm. In 1977, when they got the first available opportunity to throw that government out by the power of ballot, yeah. they did it and so meticulously they did it that even the whole world was surprised how could India decide in such a mature way. Mm -hmm. So there have been many instances such like that where we have uh, shown that uh, only because of illiteracy um, we are not an unsuccessful democracy. The way smooth transformation of power happens in India, it's amazing. Mm. So, though there is an importance of education and we are going ahead towards that goal also, and I think we will achieve that goal, but still, only lack of education is not uh, coming as a great hindrance in our democratic system. Um, you mentioned that there's a smooth change of power in the electoral system. Recently we've seen a lot of change of government in India. Um, what is this due to and there's been a lot of controversy within the different parties in, for example in the coalition government as well. Mm -hmm. Could you um, bear a little insight upon this? See, when you talk of coalition, an element of instability is inbuilt, always inbuilt in a coalition system. 
and what we have in India today nowadays presently the government it's not even a coalition government it's a hodgepodge it's an arrangement born out of compulsion mm -hmm. because coalition also has some principles that coalition is uh, between the parties uh, which have something basic or common in them and there is some pre electoral alliances for coalition government now most of these partners who are the coalition partners now they fought against each other and now they are in coalition so that's why this instability is there about uh, till 40 years there was only single party system but now in this um, parliamentary elections we had a hung parliament ours was the single largest party we formed the government but it lasted only for 13 days mm. Because we did not believe in horse trading, we did not want to buy the MPs, and all of them they they had a front against us. So they are running this government, but this will not last. Is midterm elections is the only uh, uh, solution to such a problem, so that we can again have an elections and we can have a stable parliament in which a stable government can be given. Do you then think that um, since the elections, no single party was given a major vote, do you think a new party will be formed perhaps? Not new party, new elections new election. will give a very stable uh, mandate. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that uh, the BJP was in power for 13 days. Do you feel that 13 days is enough to act as a government? I mean, you barely get into power, start stabilizing the making policies mm -hmm. and then before you know it you're out again but uh, don't you feel that it was a radical decision that with after 13 days they made such a no 13 days is no time uh, to show the results uh, though in our um, time we could show the path mm -hmm. on which we were going uh, but it is it was an unfortunate thing that all other groups combined against us and uh, they branded us as communal um, though I can say it with authenticity that BJP is not a communal party. Mm -hmm. It's only an, a misinformation campaign and a disinformation campaign against BJP that BJP is a communal party. Because we are the real secular ones. We say that everybody in India should be treated as equal. Mm -hmm. But nobody less than equal, nobody better than equal. Mm -hmm. Everybody should be treated as first class. Nobody should be treated as second class, yeah. but nobody should be treated as better than first class also. Uh, so that is the real secularism. But we call them pseudo-secular, who got uh, united. But okay, I think next time when we go to the polls, uh, the people of uh, India, the electorate of India, will bring us to power with absolute majority. Mm -hmm. Because you'll see a good graph of BJP for the last 12 years. In 1984, we had just two members of parliament. In 1986, we rose, our number rose to 89. Wow. <laughs> in 91, we were 119. And in 96, we were 162. And with 162, we were the single largest party. Yeah. So, and today we are the largest party. And now we have five allies also. So with that block, we make 204. Now it is unfortunate that a party of 40, and that also split in two, is heading the government. Yeah. So this has never happened in a democratic system, mm -hmm. but this is going on. So, but uh, I'm seeing uh, any day a midterm poll, and I'm also confident that in these elections, people will bring us to power with full bang, with full majority, and that time we will show <laughs> how to govern and what are our policies. You had a lot of opposition. Uh, why was there a lot of opposition from the different parties? No, as I said, that they branded as communal. They said uh, to have a secular. Uh, government we are going to go together the thing was that their vested interest because we were the party with 162 yeah. so if some groups come with us naturally they'll be given very few ministerial births the major chunk will be taken by us when we are 162 there um, the party with one member got united in that and even they had their share of power mm -hmm. so 40 30 20 15. So naturally they got more ministerial births. Yeah. Was thing. So that was the only interest. The policies of uh, the BJP have said to be very pro-Hindu. And if you do come into power, what are mm. some of the changes that you propose? First of all, I must make it clear. Because when you say pro-Hindu, it somewhat sounds that we are for a theocratic state. Mm. 
I must make it clear that BJP is not for a theocratic state. BJP believes in Indian constitution, Indian constitution is secular mm -hmm. and we are for a secular state. So the 